Hello and welcome back everybody. Yes, we are still here and highly operational. Still providing the best Anywhere database out there. So the good news is uh, the reason we haven't been posting on YouTube is because it's been a very busy year. So that's great. So I will take time uh, one second and thank everybody that has gotten this database. It's kept us quite busy throughout the year. Um, so I finally got some time here. I wanted to get, get another video out. Um, make sure everybody knows that we're still out there, which we are. Um, and on the screen here, I do want to share a couple uh, new things that we have going on. This is one of them. So we've kind of retooled. Uh, we've got a legitimate entity. When we first started out, it was just kind of me doing a database thing as a individual. Um, now we have Keystone Electrical Consulting LLC. Uh, I do have a website here. So that is the site that is up. Um, so you can feel free to venture out there and check it out. Um, that is also helpful because up at the top of the site here, um, there's a link to our YouTube channel. So that's the icon right here, that little play symbol. If you click that, um, you can get to the YouTube channel. Um, all the videos I post here is on the video tab. Uh, the live tab has a live demo that I posted um, about a year ago, it says there. And uh, it's getting pretty good views. So we've got good traction here. So again, thank you everybody that um, comes over to the YouTube and um, especially those of you that subscribe. I think we're up to like 94 right here. So that's pretty good. So if you do check this out and like it, uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button. It helps all the algorithms and everything and helps all you great contractors out there find us and uh, hopefully we can help you out uh, with the database, which a lot of you are grabbing it. So again, thank you very much. It's been great and hope you're enjoying it. Um, so those are the two updates there. Make sure you got the YouTube channel. Uh, be aware of the website here. Um, also, you can reach out to us. So the email is kind of long, which you can see at the top of the screen there, the info at Keystone Electrical Consulting LLC.com. If that's a little too much to type, I would say don't. Just come over to the website. Uh, you can hit the little mail button there or the get in touch button there, which will uh, do a page uh, that you can submit uh, your contact info and whatnot. We can get back to you. So, uh, website here kind of just explaining what we do and what we can offer main thing of course is the database but uh, main thing here out of the gate is just know that database is still up and running still available still going gangbusters out there so if you need assistance with Acubit anywhere if you don't like the lack of content all that kind of stuff we have the database for you Okay, so I'm going to bring Anywhere over here. We're also going to induce a tutorial into all this. First half here, I just wanted to say, yes, we're still out there. Show you these sites. Make sure you're aware of those. And then also I'm going to bring up Anywhere here and bring that over. And I do want to address a lot of you. There's so many of these that went out recently that I just want a couple uh, things to be known. Uh, let's go to the takeoff. I'm going to bring this over to the screen here. Okay, there we go. So if you are out there with the database and it's newer to you, there's a couple things that really you got to know. Uh, number one, you got to know how to tweak the program so it's going to best suit you for sure. When it comes out of the box all the time, it's just kind of odd. And that is whether it comes out of the box without this database or with this database. There's a couple settings that you just gotta know to tweak and that's what we're gonna go over. So I'm gonna go up to the top here to the menu. And my, up at the top it does say menu, that little banner there is kind of blocking it, but if you got the program, you can kind of tell them up here at the top and you can see the menu. Then I'm gonna go to settings and options. And let me bring that window over. And we'll put that right there. 
Okay, let me kind of expand all these down. All right, so when you get this database, what I would highly recommend is going to these settings, and there's a couple crucial ones in here. The main ones are, number one, this one, the default change management tab. I always put that to PCO. It does not come like that out of the box. It's usually RFP, so that's number one. Number two, I would say make this live count up here at the top. Uh, the auto launch, quite frankly, I'm not a big fan of that. I don't use it. I will historically only come over here and turn this on if I'm in a real production mode. If I'm doing a large project with a lot of light fixtures, I will come over and toggle this on, but only if I'm in that quote unquote production mode and then I turn it off. It's just me. I don't like it. Um, the reason I don't like it is because then if you're doing takeoff that doesn't require that, like in the details tab or something like that, and you just want to mantle, manually enter something real quick, then it is always trying to launch over there. And I just find that irritating. So that's kind of my reason. Another important setting would be this audit trail co calculation. Out of the box, this is set to on demand. I would change this to on resolution. If your says on demand and you change it to on resolution, when you exit this window, finally, it will kind of prompt you and say, since you changed that setting, you got to close the program, open it back up. So nothing too scary. Just be prepared for that. The, the effect won't come into play unless you do close the program and open it back up. Uh, this one is also very important, especially for those of you that have my database is show takeoff image. You want that to say yes. By default, it says no. I'll show you two big areas where that comes into play, but for now, we'll just talk about the setting. Uh, this appearance one, so let's just go over this real quick. This one is really preference when it comes right down to it. Those ones that we mentioned previously, I would say those are kind of the hard, fast ones you want set. This one, I would say, is your preference. Um, this theme is like Windows. You can change the color. I have mine set to black, which, let's be honest, it's gray. Uh, but I like that better than that default uh, blue, or I think Studio might be the default. I don't really remember at this point. It's either blue or Studio, but that's neither here nor there. But whatever color you like, that's fine. Pick one of those. You can play around with that. Uh, this navigation icon size is over here. So it's these icons. If you can see my cursor over towards the upper left, that's the size of these icons. And then the other one is show navigation bar text. I have mine set to no. So that, if yours, if yours does not say no, then you probably see text to the right of these icons. I'm a huge fan of screen real estate, so I don't want all that space taken up. So I get that right the heck out of there. Again, preference. So whether you like that or not, that's up to you. Um, I would say as you get familiar with the program, you don't really need these icons um, as large. And again, even with the text, you don't really need the text once you get used to it. Another thing to note, which we can probably see once I close this window, if you hover over those icons, it tells you what they are anyway. So I don't think you really need to text, in my opinion. But again, all preference this area. And grid colors, I don't really mess with those. The only one that I might mess with from time to time is this read only background. If you like that, a different color, like a grayish, I've been known to change that to like this light gray, uh, that would be fine, but I don't really mess with the other stuff. That's all fine. So read only backgrounds, the only one that I would mention in this box. So all the other ones I pretty much leave as is because they can either be a little dangerous or uh, cause issues. So I really don't mess with those. The only ones I pointed out would be the ones that I changed. Uh, pretty much if you snipped this screen as it sits here, that's pretty much how I have it. So that's a good gauge right there. So even if you already forgot what I rattled down through, through here, just 
take a snip of that, check out those settings, and mimic those. Okay, moving on. So I'm going to close that. And that's the point where that window would come up and say you need to close the program and restart it. Um, so that audit trail calculation, why that's important, let's cover two things here uh, before we move on. That is so you see these material and labor values as you go. So if these are blank when you enter things, that's why. Because that audit trail calculation is on demand, not on resolution. Now, if they were blank, you can hit this corner of the audit trail up here to the left of the notes. And then you could always right click and do this calculate material and labor value. That will force those values there if you didn't have them. So that's kind of the workaround. Uh, and then I can show you this. So again, if you hover over these icons, you can see it tells me that that's designation, uh, extension, close out, stuff like that. So personally, I just don't see having that text hogging up the real estate. And then it kind of pushes all of this breakdown area over and just gives you a little more screen space, which I'm typically after. All right, so let's talk about that image thing. So those of you that have the database, let's go to the receptacles here. This is one in particular. So if you open up one of these assemblies, you can see that I have a tutorial, if you will, baked into here. So it's telling you how to use it. So this is why it's vastly important in my environment here and this database in particular, because I do stuff like this to try to help you out. If you don't have that image on in the settings, then you would not see this. And also in the items, there's a lot of images, so you can uh, gut check yourself and have a visual of the certain widget or whatnot, and then you can visually see it and say, okay, yes, that's what I want. So that's why I say that's very important because you not only see item images, but then tutorials like this where I'm telling you uh, the easy way to the end and how to use it. So be sure you got those on and you see that. So I'll hit cancel there. Okay, then the other thing out of the box that's really weird, I see a lot of people with these check boxes unchecked like so over here in the attributes. Now those will always remain unchecked unless you do this little hack. Don't ask me how I ever found this out. It's the weirdest thing, but it works. So I have a template here that I say is kind of the default template. Now, once all of you buy the database, you can do whatever tweaks you want with that template. Obviously, load in the closeout information, do whatever, but you should have a template nonetheless. Now, this goes for each user. Each user has to enter this template, and this is where it gets a little tricky. If you have some cowboy estimators that you really don't trust in the template, maybe you want to kind of look over their shoulder while they do this so they don't make any mistakes in the template or accidentally enter things in the template because you want this left clean. So you kind of do have to warn people, hey, if you're going to go do this to keep your check boxes on, just go in, check them, get the heck out of there, never speak of this again, and let's just move on and pretend you never did it because you can do some damage in here. So as, as you can see, mine are already checked. Yours most likely would not be by default. And that's pretty much what you want to monitor and check out is check these boxes in the template like mine are here and then just go out of it. And that's it. Then when you make new estimates, those check boxes will always be checked. So that's very important as well. So a little hack there just to get those uh, consistently on. So let's continue on some oddities of a new install. And like I said, a lot of this stuff is going to be the case whether you have my template or not. I would say the only one that is specific to um, my database is 
the image one. So the default database really doesn't have the images, so you wouldn't really gain anything by doing that anyway. Um, but stuff like that template hack, that would probably work whether you had this or not. And uh, probably some of these other things I'm gonna go over. So in the designation, for whatever reason, this quantity, the takeoff quantity is typically missing like such it's just not there and you wouldn't even know it's supposed to be there it's just missing by default so what you have to do is come into the designations right click do add remove columns which brings up the box here and then you need to slide that up into place and then it's there but historically by default of a new install that's always missing for whatever reason i don't know why Another area that's usually missing with a new install, which again, you just kind of got to know. Let me put this over here. Okay. In the specs, this minimum column is typically missing like such. Uh, so usually same thing. You'll notice a theme here. Once you learn these techniques, they're pretty much the same. So you can move columns take columns off, add columns, no matter where it is in the program, this is the same. So once you learn it, you've got it. You can do it pretty much anywhere on the extension, on the takeoff, in the audit trail, wherever. So that's typically missing too. You just have a max column sitting there and you have no idea why it's just one thing. So again, right click, add remove column. You would most likely have that minimum column hanging out there, drag that back up and good to go. So make sure you got that. One thing to keep in mind here, these are one and done fixes. So no, you don't have to do this every estimate you open up. You do have to do it per user. So each user has to do these tweaks. I've been hounding Trimble to do a global layout, which would be nice. And then the database manager could basically set this theme and then push it to everybody. But unfortunately, that's not a thing yet. So if anybody wants to hound Trimble and request that, uh, please do. Because I think we would all agree that that'd be very useful to kind of push a global layout. Uh, so once you fix that minimum column, that's fine. And then the other thing that you would have to do is all these toggle filter rows I have turned on. Those are not on by default. So any screen in the program, I just go through and turn it on everywhere. I won't cover all of them right now just for the sake of time because I've noticed just other YouTube videos. A lot of people get annoyed if you go on too much and then they start saying hey just get to the point tell me what i need to know and don't drone on too much so we're just going to kind of go through and cover all these things and then you can just figure out how to turn it on on all the other places and just try it everywhere and that's that but to get that you just right click and do toggle filter row most likely yours looks like this without it if it's right out of the box um, you just do toggle filter row there and then the main places you want it is down here in the audit trail. You can see mine's always already on. And it's like a light switch. It's, it's either always on or always off. So that's another thing that I was saying. These are all set it and forget it. Once you do all this stuff, it's like that in your profile, no matter what estimate you do. And it's just like that. So that's the good news. You don't have to do this over and over again by any means. So I definitely make sure it's on in the uh, audit trail, which again, right click, toggle filter row. Uh, I turn it on in the job item area. So if you were looking for a uh, particular thing in a long list of job items, you could do it there. Then the other obvious places in the extension. And then if you were looking for everything EMT, you could type EMT and that's pretty much what it does. It's a contains function, much like Excel would do. And that's why it's useful. It's good for looking for things. And the other last place that I'll mention that's just obvious is the project screen. If you have hundreds and hundreds of estimates in here, you can find them by just typing in 
So if I had a bunch of draw, um, estimates here and I know it was drawing test, then as soon as I type that, it eliminates everything else. Uh, the most unique word, the better, obviously, because then it's going to find that unique word and then squelch out everything else. So awesome feature. I love it. Thank you, Max, for the toggle filter row. You're the best, hands down. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in again. And thank you again to all the great contractors that bought the database this year. I really enjoyed talking to all of you this year. Uh, it's been great learning about all your different companies. I really enjoy that part as well. Um, so look forward to more of these and stay tuned. Uh, thank you very much.